In today's video, we'll be painting a crashing wave and sea foam using a bird's eye view perspective. We'll talk you through the process step by step. Welcome to Acrylic Arts Academy, we teach the world to paint. Subscribe to our channel for more helpful acrylic painting videos. Hit the bell icon when subscribing to be notified of our upcoming tutorials. For this tutorial, you'll need the following colors, white, brown, and yellow ochre, and you'll also need green, primary blue, and white paint. We'll be using a half inch flat brush, a mop brush, a small round brush, and a fan brush. There's an option to use a filbert brush too. If you need to find these supplies, the links below will help you find the right tools for this tutorial. The first step will be painting the shoreline. Let's begin by creating the sand on the bottom third of the canvas. For this step, you'll need the half inch flat brush and tan paint, which can be mixed by using two to three parts white paint, one part brown, and a dash of yellow ochre. Mix this color well before applying it to the canvas. Pause the video if you need more time. Start this step by painting a wavy line across the canvas as you see here. Take time to fill in the area below the line you just painted. Use broad side-to-side -side brush strokes, and this will help you to complete this task quickly. Scoop up some brown paint with your brush when you've covered this part of the canvas. No need to wash the brush in between colors this time. We'll be using a wet-on-wet -wet blending technique, so adding this color while the paint is wet is a good idea. As illustrated here, add a bit of brown paint near the top of the sand color, near the wavy line. Swipe your brush back and forth to blend this color into the previous one. You can blend this as much as you like or leave it a bit dynamic with a few brush strokes showing. It's your creative decision. Grab your mop brush and swish it over the paint to get a smoother render on this sand color. Do not add any paint to the brush as you do this. Swish your brush over the applied paint and watch these colors blend together smoothly. Next up will be painting water. You'll need the half inch flat brush and teal paint for this part. You can mix teal paint by adding equal parts green and blue with up to two parts white. Pause the video and take some time to match the teal color that we're using. Be sure to mix plenty of this color. This will help you cover the canvas well and help you mix the other shades required for this tutorial. Make sure you have a bit of color left over for the next steps. Using this teal color, Paint the remainder of the canvas leading up to the shoreline. Don't paint over the sand that you just created. Using broad side-to-side -side brush strokes will help you do this part evenly and quickly. Once you have filled this part in, scoop up some blue paint without cleaning your brush. Add blue to the water's edge and blend it in. Blend upward a few inches from the shoreline and let the blue color disappear into the water. In this next mini step, we'll create a smooth render by using the mop brush and no added color. If your mop brush is wet from the last time you used it, it's okay. Just make sure it's clean and squeeze out as much of the water as possible from the bristles. The result will be a nice, smooth render. Now, we'll switch back to the half inch flat brush. Mix a little white into a small portion of teal, making light teal. Use this color to paint a strip along the wavy shoreline. It's good to overlap the sand color and the water's edge for this step. Hopefully the sand color will be a bit dry at this point so that it doesn't mix with your light teal color. If it's not, just wait a little bit before you do this step. Just as you recently added blue to the water, use a wet on wet blending technique to add light teal to the shoreline. Work upward and use swoopy brush strokes until this color blends and disappears into the sea. Clean your half inch flat brush and mix some dark teal paint. 
Do this by adding a little blue or a touch of black to some of the teal watercolor you previously mixed. You only need a little bit of this color. Add some dark teal using swoop paintbrush strokes toward the top of your canvas and in the upper corners. Work downward for one or two inches, blending as you go. And now we'll use the smooth render technique to blend out the water. You'll need a clean mop brush and be sure to remove as much water from the bristles as possible. No paint is required here. As you swish back and forth to blend this color, decide if you want the color to be perfectly smooth or leave behind a bit of movement by allowing some brush strokes to shine through. To allow for more movement, don't blend every brush stroke out. Keep swishing the mop brush until all brush marks disappear for a smoother render. Next, let's create the edge of the sea foam. For this step, you'll need a small round brush like the one we'll show you in a moment. You'll also need white paint. To begin, paint a wavy line below the water line. Watch us work for a few seconds and you'll understand the method better. If the line looks broken or too thin, fortify it by painting over it again. This line does not need to be perfect and the wavier and messier it is, the better. Moving on, you'll need a fan brush and light teal paint. Mix very light teal by using a small amount of teal watercolor and plenty of white paint. In this tutorial portion, you'll need to trust the process. Add some very light teal color to the tips of the bristles of your fan brush. Use a stamping motion to apply this paint above the wavy line you just added. Try not to panic and trust the process as you add this color. We'll be laying this portion down and that's just the first step. This is going to be layered. Now let's add some details to the sea foam. You'll need a small round brush or detailer brush and white paint. You can also choose to use a very light teal. Add small squiggly lines moving upward from the shoreline as you see us doing here. Add these little lines across the entirety of the shoreline. They don't need to be perfectly uniform or perfect at all. Add as many or as few as you like while you work. To blend and layer this part of the painting, use a fan brush, a round brush, or filbert brush that's dry to stamp on top of the color you just added. This dry brushing technique will help blend out bright spots and bring this sea foam together. Use a little light teal on a fan brush to add slightly more color if needed. Getting this part just right requires some layering and you're almost done. Great job sticking with it. Switch to the smaller brush and white paint once more as you punch up the color on some of your wiggly highlight lines moving upward on the canvas. Play around and add as many of these details as you like. For the last step, you'll add the final touches using a clean dry brush. You can use a clean round filbert or fan brush to do this part. This portion of the painting is about blending bright elements using dry brushing or adding more details where there aren't enough. Take some time to get your painting just right before the paint dries. Work until you're pleased with the look of your painting. Excellent job and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Begin your acrylic painting journey by visiting acrylicartsacademy.com slash free guides.